You know, I was pretty excited when I first saw this cooler at Computex this year. I thought, Asus's big debut into the liquid AIO market. Sounds promising, why not? And then I got the sample a couple days ago, took a first glance and went, yeah, this is actually looking pretty good. Then I saw the price tag and went, whoa, whoa, pump the brakes, compadre. That's a lot of spendo for your CPU friendo. Because at 280 US dollars, this thing needs to absolutely crush the competition in every sense of the word. And after putting it through its paces, I can confidently say, it does not. No, it doesn't. The Thermaltake A500 Aluminum TG Mid-Tower features a sleek aluminum front panel and two 4mm tempered glass panels for breathtaking views. Enjoy 420 and 360 rad support at the front and top respectively, and breeze through installation with a dismantleable modular design. Step up your case game with the A500 Aluminum TG and click on the link below for more info. So this is the ASUS ROG Ryujin 360mm liquid AIO, and for all intents and purposes, it is an Asetek cooler. It's an Asetek pump, tubes, radiator. Asetek. Layered on top of that, we have three premium Noctua IPPC industrial grade 2000 RPM PWM fans and some cool design choices and features that have been integrated into the water block by ASUS. Now, starting with the radiator and fans, I probably like this part of the AIO the most from a hardware perspective. The fans are Noctuous, they're super high quality, and we'll talk about performance in just a bit, but they're all blacked out, they've got rubber corners on them to reduce noise and vibration, and the sleeves, for the most part, are sleeved in black, with again, those four pin PWM connectors. The radiator's on the thin side at 27 millimeters thick, but that's usually what you get with these 360 millimeter AIOs, and you've also got a fairly dense looking fin stack. You get 38 millimeters of sleeve tubing, which doesn't kink very easily, that's a plus. The gauge is on the thinner side, so kind of what you would find with an NZXT Kraken cooler, for example, really doesn't affect performance at all, it's just a cosmetic thing. Now this being a fairly basic Asetek cooler at its core, you do have fixed hoses to the water block and radiator, so you do not have an expandable loop here. You can't add a GPU water block down the line, you can't add more radiators, you can't even refill or top off your fluid should it get low in the future. And for the price, I would have liked to see that as a feature. You do get a sizable wad of cables coming off your water block, including SATA power, USB 2.0 to connect this to your motherboard so you can enable RGB lighting control and some other things that we'll talk about in a moment. There's a trio of four pin PWM connectors for your fans and one four pin PWM connector for your pump. Installation of the water block is super quick and easy. It's standard Ace Tech stuff. I'm sure a lot of you guys are already familiar with how that works. It did come pre-installed with an Intel bracket. So I guess that saves you some time if you're going Intel and will cost you some time if you're going AMD. On the front of the water block, we have sort of a two-tone design here with some brushed aluminum and this highly reflective kind of plasticky glossy finish. And I'm not a huge fan of this. It looks great when you first take it out of the box, but you quickly realize that it micro scratches very easily. Even taking a microfiber cloth to it was just scratching it up left and right. So I don't know. Again, for the price, I was expecting slightly higher materials, especially on the face of the water block that's going to be seen the most. With the unit powered on, you can see the customizable addressable RGB strip and the 1.77 inch full color OLED display, which can be used for a variety of things like displaying your own custom pictures or graphics, or even your system's diagnostics like CPU temperature, voltage, clock speed, and so forth. You can pretty much select from a variety of data and it'll cycle through them. Unfortunately, you can't choose the speed at which it cycles, so that, that that's kind of a bummer. Additionally, you can put a custom message on the OLED, but it doesn't let you change the font type or the size. So if you just wanted to write like one or two words and fill up the screen, you can't. It's just a tiny little piece of text and you can hardly see it. Now I was able to add my own still image and that was pretty cool. Definitely adds a unique element, but for whatever reason, an animated GIF just wasn't working. It wouldn't take the, the ROG logo would just stay there and stare at me awkwardly. I made sure it was the right size, resolution and all that and it still would not take. So that kind of sucked. The RGB is fine, it looks great. You can turn it off if you want, bunch of different effects, whoop de doo So I don't know, man. I knew the OLED thing was super gimmicky going into this, but I thought it would be cooler than it really was. You know, I mean, I couldn't customize text. I couldn't upload an animated GIF. So the whole thing just kind of left me disappointed over what I thought was gonna be one of the cooler features of this product, but what can you do? Now this whole section is actually a removable shroud, so I can pop it off. It's just held in place by two magnets. It stays on just fine. It's fairly lightweight because it's mostly made of plastic, and there's a naked view of the OLED screen there. But within this plastic housing at the bottom, there's actually a 60 millimeter fan that fires air downward out of these three openings, and that's supposed to cool down your VRM and your M.2 drive, assuming that you have an M.2 slot near your CPU socket. On the bright side, the fan is super quiet, and I could hardly even tell that it was on. I had to really put my ear super close to it, and even then, I really 
just had to look at the blades to ensure that it was actually spinning, so that's good, it's quiet. The downside is, is that it didn't really seem to help our VRM temperatures very much. Now granted, I didn't go like full gamers nexus with testing and stuff, but I didn't really see a huge difference in VRM temperatures coming from this cooler to a Fractal Design S36, which is also a 360 millimeter liquid AIO with a similar radiator to this one. I think it's 30 millimeters, just three millimeters thicker than this. But yeah, it didn't seem to make a huge difference, maybe a degree or two here and there on some of the temp sensors. But wait, it gets even more underwhelming, folks, because when it came to cooling our 9900K, this $280 Ryogen cooler performed equally to our $115 Fractal Design S36. Both of them hit 74C under load after 15 minutes in GTA 5 at 1440p. Both of them were averaging anywhere from 55 to 65 degrees Celsius during my gameplay. That 74C was just a peak. Exactly the same. It is also an Asetek cooler. The fans are not Noctua's, they're, they're Fractal Zone in-house fans, but they were just fine, just as effective and virtually just as quiet. Here's a sound test. This cooler is twice as expensive as the other one. Why? Why is it twice as expensive? I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. What are you paying for? Are you paying for the lousy OLED screen or the, the, the 60 millimeter fan that doesn't seem to be doing anything? No, no, you're not. You know what you're paying for? This, this right here, ROG. And this, this as well, Republic of Gamers, and Noctua. These are premium brands that sell for premium prices. And even though not everyone will pay these extreme prices for such things, there's enough people who do. And that's enough for Asus to make a product featuring these brands and selling it for an extremely high price. The only way you could sell an AIO for $280 is you can't. You, you just you just can't. This is definitely a rocky start for Asus into the liquid AIO market. If it weren't for the price, it'd be fine, but coming out with these numbers, man, I am rooting for you. I hope the next iteration of these products is affordable and that you've worked out some of the kinks that we talked about today. Aha, hose pun, <laughs> nailed it. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next video.